So while I'm probably coming to the end of the videos I can make about my Ironman event, I wanted to make a couple more, one of them being about the mistakes I made doing an overseas Ironman. This is my first time ever doing an Ironman outside of the country or any sort of event outside of the UK. So I wanted to make a video about that, showing a day in the life of my off-season training and then also, yeah, some of the mistakes I made. And when I go back to Portugal, these are things that I'm going to try and improve on. I'm packing to go swimming today, so not quite as much, but obviously if you're doing an overseas Ironman, uh, unless you're like driving there or something like that, you're probably going to have to pack up your bike, put it on an aeroplane, uh, which is going to involve going in a bike box. So I definitely practice uh, not only the uh, packing away at home, but also the assembly when you get there. Also try and do this early. I didn't really do it until like two days before and I was missing one screw. Thankfully it wasn't really extremely vital so I could just about get away with it. But if I made my bike a few days earlier, I could have then had more time to go to the shop and get any replacement parts I needed. One thing I would also get that I didn't have was like an air tag sort of thing, which I've seen a lot of people post about. Really good idea to just even just put it in your bike anyway and just have it in like your saddlebag, put it in there. And then if your bike does go missing at the airport, at least you can say, yes, it's definitely in this country. I can see it on here, it's in the right airport. So yeah, where's my bike? Thankfully, mine went pretty smooth, but it was a constant worry, especially on the flight there, that I was gonna get there and have no bike. Just finished my porridge, which brings me on to point number two, which is if you can practice your nutrition and uh, try and keep it as similar as possible when you're overseas. I managed to do this for breakfast, at least in Portugal, because I just got porridge oats and had toast and stuff like that, which would be similar to what I would normally have and also what I wanted to have on race day. The problem I had is that I went a little bit too heavy too early the night before the race i always try and have something big so like a pizza or something like that because i find that yeah you want to get a load of calories in don't be an idiot more like me and have uh reheated takeaway rice which again i would probably normally do that at home and it was fine but yeah in portugal did not end so well this also applies for like race nutrition so like gels and stuff like that i took all my own gels took my own tailwind even though they provide it on the course if you can ideally buy the stuff that they're going to have on the course but like morton gels are quite expensive and i didn't really want to buy you know 20 morton gels just to get another 10 for free or whatever it would have been but now i've had my uh, nutritious breakfast a nice bottle of porridge i waited about an hour so i'm gonna go and get a nice little run in and then we'll talk about some more of the mistakes i made all right so just finished my interval run on the cool down now and the next tip is kind of relevant to my session today which is to train for the event you're doing which i suppose makes sense if you're not doing an overseas ironman but if you're doing an overseas ironman it's going to be harder to uh, wreck the course or test it out beforehand, have a practice route. But you can try and train for the elevation that's going to be on the course, so that's for the bike and the run. I didn't do that. I didn't train for the hills, or well, the massive hill that was in the Portugal ride twice, and then the long flat sections I also didn't really train for. I just kind of carried on doing routes around my local area. I uh, didn't make it to the run, but Probably would have been okay for that, and the run is actually doing today. I'm trying to get a park run PB by the end of the year, so this route has got some hills in it, which the park run does, so it's good to trade in there. Um, but yeah, the main one also is the biggest one's probably the swim. Sea swim in Portugal, most overseas ones will be a sea swim. I think it's Barcelona, I think that's one of the European ones that's the lake. So yeah, you can get out and train for the sea, do that. Just got home from the run, had a shower, had some dinner. Feeling good now and I want to get on to my next point, which is uh, about, I suppose when you're doing an overseas Ironman, a lot of the time, unless you're going to like America or Australia or somewhere like that, or you're from one of those countries and coming to England, you're going to be speaking a different language. And I think that's definitely something I should have done beforehand is learn a bit of Portuguese. Instead, we like landed and I was like in the taxi on the way to our Airbnb, like, um, I don't know how you say thank you in this language. I'm like Googling it, even, you know, on a couple of Zwift rides, instead of watching Disney Plus like I do half the time, putting on some like Portuguese lessons in the background or something like that could massively help or even like a podcast or something. I think it's a small tip, but I definitely think that could go a long way. I'm going to do some jobs around the house now, pack away some clothes and uh, yeah, get into our next tip. So many clothes to pack away. Now I need to try and move this TV from upstairs to downstairs. So we've actually got a TV we can use. I'm running out of different rooms to film this in around the house, but uh, we'll move it to the uh, office bike room now. My next tip, it kind of fits into the one earlier about the food, but don't treat your overseas Ironman like a holiday, at least not at first. I would make sure you get through the first couple of days, have the race, and then if you've got a few more days afterwards, a bit of time for recovery, and then you can enjoy the holiday after that. For me, I we kind of did way too much like touristy stuff, which I suppose is my fault because I've got Nicole, I've got my son Arlo, I've got my father-in-law, we're all there and then they're wanting to go out and do things and I'm, you know, going along. And I think on some of the days I must have done like 15,000 steps, which is not ideal a couple of days before doing an Ironman. Be aware that you want to not do too much touristy stuff or maybe do the stuff that's going to be like not too much walking around. And I definitely like make use of public transport. We kind of walked 
a lot of places wanting to kind of explore and see the sites which really wouldn't be better off doing after race day instead of trying to squeeze that all in before not the best idea i guess this is how i'm watching videos on zwift now the, ne the next one kind of follows straight on from that um now that the second to last point is that you want to make sure they understand the assignment because you don't want them to be going thinking that it's going to be all holiday all the time because us especially going with a toddler it was like we were just trying to keep them entertained the whole time and then when it got to actual race day and even the day before when you're trying to just you know have time to prep things but we're also trying to plan in and do things to keep them entertained and, and things we're going to enjoy ourselves it, it was tough so i think next time i go overseas i'll probably try and bring more people um have more people to support and then more people to help with childcare and things like that and then also like if, if like you need to just go to a bike mechanic you can just kind of go off on your own and do it or just take one person with you and then everyone else can go off and do something else and kind of split off a bit more like that and then during the actual race you'll have more support to kind of keep you going the race that we did it actually didn't start till like 9 a.m normally when after nine months it starts at like seven in the morning so not saying nine o'clock it meant that like if i was going to finish in like 12 13 hours it'd be like 10 11 o'clock at night which meant really Nicole couldn't come to the finish line because she'd be at home with Arlo who's probably going to be asleep at that point. Try and plan that and have that going on and make sure that everyone that's going is aware and maybe you, you know, you're like paying for the trip so, you know, they're aware that like, yeah, you're coming with me but also I'm going to need your support and we need your help. We're not just going for uh, a fun time. Of course, hopefully the Ironman is fun. Wasn't so much from my point of view. Uh, it didn't go down very well, so I ended up being sick in a train station toilet. Well, basically, at the end of the day, pretty much ready for bedtime now and for my final point. Well, sometimes it actually is and I would say the biggest thing for me, if you're stretching to afford to do an overseas Ironman, it's going to be more challenging if you have to like, you know, skimp out on certain things. I would definitely have rather, looking back now, took another year, saved some more money and gone out and done it the right way, maybe being more expensive, maybe even like twice the price, but just having it way more efficient. So I would probably spend more money to make sure you can be as efficient as possible. There are people that are staying in a hotel like next to the start line. I can't imagine how much that would have cost, but it must have been so much easier for them to like get their stuff in tran to transition, to register, things like that. These are things that took me like a couple of hours to do because I was having to travel by train and get there and then sort it out and then travel back. It was just like, yeah, taking more time, which I think during that week, you want the time to just rest and prepare for the race. And I definitely would have rather paid more money to be more efficient, get things done quicker instead of having to, uh, yeah like rush around but that's it for the video let me know if you've done an overseas ironman or you're planning on doing one and if these tips help i know they're not really race specific tips uh, but i think i've covered a lot of the race stuff so this is more like the holiday planning side of things not holiday the event planning side of things going away and what you should be aware of so yeah one to uh watch out for and hopefully use in the future right i'm gonna go try and do bedtime i'll see you later